What is going on in the Anchorage real estate market? Are things going to collapse? Is there going to be a, a big shift anytime in the near future towards affordability? Is the trend that we're seeing in real estate something we should just expect moving forward to kind of be the norm? My name is Jamin Gerker. I'm an associate real estate broker in South Central Alaska. And today we're going to be giving you the market update for what is going on in the largest real estate market in the entire state of Alaska. Before we do so, make sure you do get this video like, subscribe, do all the good stuff. And without further ado, let's go and jump into today's market update, looking first at the residential market. Now, the first thing that we see is that when we're looking at the uh, the single family residential market is that this time last year, there were 175 homes on the market. And this year, there's about 160. Now that's a dip and it's not good if you're looking for a property and it sounds like a dip, but it's even more than that once we look at it historically, because usually this time of year, we would expect to see somewhere um, in the year 2020 before COVID or the COOF happened, we had about 530. And the year before that, usually we're looking at about 650 or even 700. So being at 160 sounds low compared to 170, but it's even lower than that historically. The next thing that we see is that the number of properties that sold this time last year was 151, and this year it's 163. So despite the fact that we do see a, a dip in the number of um, properties that are available on the market, we're still seeing a pretty good increase in the number of properties that are actually selling. So this does indicate a, a high demand for properties, even though the market is as um, bare bones as it is right now. Now, the next thing we see is the average sold price looking at single family properties in, um, in Anchorage for the month that we have the most complete information, which is March, went from about 460 this time last year to about 480 this year. And this really has been the trend really uh, for the entire year up to this point, because in February, we went from about 443,000 to 464,000. And for the month of January, it actually had an even bigger jump from 435 to 465. So seeing about 20 to $25,000 average increase across the board so far this year is really what we're seeing. Now we're going to summarize everything in just a little bit here and kind of give you a, a little bit more of a takeaway besides just the raw data. But this, um, you know, that's really what we have right now for the single family homes. But let's go and switch gears and take a look at what's going on in the condo market. In the condo market this time last year, there were 58 homes that are on the market. And this year, there are 67. So that is a little bit of an increase. Historically, though, that still is, is pretty small compared to what we usually have. Because usually about this time of year in Anchorage, we would have about uh, usually about mid 300, you know, 330, 350, somewhere in that range. So the fact that we're at approximately 70 right now still puts us at a, approximately a fifth of what we usually have on the market. And that's, you know, again, just kind of indicates kind of the, the scarce market that we're in right at the moment. Next, what we see is that the number of condos that actually sold in Anchorage went from 83 this time of year last year in month of March, and now it's down to 67. So there's a bit of a drop in the, the number of, of condos that are actually selling. And that's uh, kind of indicative of, of a couple things. We'll talk about more about why that might be in the summary, but I do have some theories. Last but not least, we see that the average sold price for condos went from about 274000 this time last year to about two hundred and seventy this year. But before we get too excited and start talking about a drop in prices for condos in Anchorage, let's keep in mind that in previous months, it went from month of February, went from approximately two hundred and sixty to 272000 for February. And then for the month of January, it went from 230 to about 258,000. So we do in fact see um, a continued increase and I suspect the month of March might just be kind of a fluke, but you know that's uh, any, any sign of those prices coming down would be uh, favorable if you're a buyer. I'm not, I don't really think that's what we're seeing in these numbers though. So sorry to be the bearer of bad news. All right, let's go ahead and take a break real quick. For those of you who've been watching for a bit, you do know that I host a podcast called the Alaskan Journey Podcast, where I talk with people who have recently moved to Alaska and talk with them about their experience of moving here, what they think about the state. And so if you're looking for an opportunity to just kind of learn about you know, what it is like living up here and you don't necessarily want to hear me always being the one talking about it, this is going to be a great thing for you to go check out. Also, real quick, I'm looking for some feedback. Um, we have got... Obviously, this uh, this really white background here. I'm kind of playing around in the uh, the studio I'm in at the moment to see what kind of background you know I kind of like better. Um, if you like the 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 white background, 
go ahead and comment in the comment section down below. If you're more of a fan of kind of the, the black kind of brooding background, then by all means, make sure you throw that in the comment section as well. I am I'm not really married to either style right at the moment. Now, let's go and finish up today's market update. Finally, let's go and talk about what's going on in the multifamily market. So looking at the multifamily market, we see that this time last year, there were 36 multifamily properties that were on the market. Now it is 59. So approximately double the inventory of what we saw this time last year. And this has really kind of been the trend for the entire year up to this point, because in January, there were 35 properties available on the market and 59 again. And for the month of February, we see that there were 33 available for 2023. I should specify for the year 2023, um, there were 33 properties available. And now uh, there were 61 for the month of February. And so we see more or less that's almost exactly just maintaining itself throughout the entire year so far. And that sounds like a huge jump. But let's also keep in mind that pre-COVID, we were used to seeing about 150 up to about 180 properties available. So yes, we are seeing an increase. Um, but not nearly enough to make up for where we were before. Now, looking at the number of multifamily properties that have actually sold, we went from 16 this time last year to 19 this year. So we see a bit of an increase there, at least looking at, at just the, the month. So that is favorable indicator if you are a multifamily property owner and you're just looking to, to get out from under something and um, tr just trying to free up some cash, this might be a good opportunity to, uh, to be looking because there obviously is a demand. Um, I will say, though, that um, historically, usually about this time of year, you know, that's that's actually about about par. You know, we'd see about 20, maybe up to about 25 properties actually sell. So the fact that we're seeing 19, even though the inventory is uh, drastically low, that kind of indicative of how much demand there is for multifamilies right now. Last but not least, we see that the average sold price for multifamily properties, just looking at the month of March, went from about 508000 to about 584000 for the month of March. So this is obviously a pretty pretty sizable increase, but once we're talking about multifamily, it, it really can go up and down pretty easily just because the multifamily includes everything from the little old duplex all the way up to the big 30-plex you know, commercial property. So it includes quite a bit. So we do expect to see some fluctuation though. I would also say that if you do have multifamilies right now, pretty good chance that your property has appreciated at a pretty healthy rate for the month of March. Probably not up to about 80,000, but you know, a pretty good healthy amount. We'll say, you know, usually about, I would be ecstatic if I was getting about uh, four to 5% appreciation but you know for multifamily that sometimes just does not happen because most of the value is going to be in the cash flow and it appreciates at a slower rate than what the single family residential properties do okay so let's go ahead and just give you the uh, the summary real quick on what all this means so really the takeaway for me is the inventory remains pretty low and if you're looking to jump in to get a home anytime soon probably a good idea to, to jump in sooner rather than later i know there's all sorts of people on on TikTok and all the places talking about, oh, you should just wait till the market collapses or wait till this happens or wait till that happens or isn't this unfair? Isn't that unfair? And ultimately, who cares? You know, cursing at the wind and all the circumstances around us, inflation is up and this is up and this is more expensive. And those that's the wind right now, okay? And the answer isn't that we're out on a boat and we're cursing the wind. The answer is let's adjust our sails. So if you are looking at actually jumping in and making it happen, I would actually recommend sooner rather than later because with the inventory being as low as it is, actually lower than what it was back in, you know, back when the housing market went crazy in 2020 and 2021, you can imagine how much more of a bloodbath it would be if everybody suddenly got into such a house feeding frenzy again and started competing for an even smaller pool of houses. So if you want to avoid that, reach out to me. Let's talk a little bit and see how I can help you. Now, if you are looking at selling a house in the near future, really nothing is bad news here for you, except you're going to have to turn right around after selling your property and start house hunting in this exact same market. I've seen an increase of, of sellers out there saying, well, we'll sell our house if we can find another one. And for my buyers, I'm always just no, like we're not even going to play with that because the seller has every reason in the world not to be looking for a new house. And if they do, they're not going to be particularly motivated. So if you're going to be a seller, then I just jump in with both feet and say, we're going to go find something first, and then we're going to get our house on the market 
and uh, just make sure your house is sooner rather than later prepared so you're not um, not putting yourself in any kind of a bind. And I'm sorry, I went off on a bit of a tangent there, but that's really what we're seeing for the entire market here. I'm not expecting any big collapses happening anytime in the near soon, just because the inventory is as low as it is. And if there's going to be any kind of a collapse or the prices are suddenly going to come tumbling down, it's going to be because there is a glut of inventory and it, we have the exact opposite problem now. So this has been your market update talking about what's going on in Anchorage. Thank you very much for listening. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me on my website and I'd be happy to help. Thank you.